Hello and welcome back to Dukescopy TV. I'm Ben Jones and this is your first edition of Commodities Corner for the week. The price of gold has been on a rise for the past few weeks and joining me on the line to discuss some of the reasons behind this is Andrei Kryachenkov from VTB Capital. So Andrei, there have been a few major factors recently that may have continued to push the price of gold up. It's now surpassed a three week high. Firstly, can you explain how the increasing tensions in Ukraine are altering the price of the commodity? Well, generally, there has been uh, a little support to gold after the uh, April uh, sell-off, you know, early April sell-off, aside from geopolitical concerns. And this was the key driver in uh, mid-April and lately as well. Uh, Risk-averse investors uh, increased the exposure in gold just, you know, on safe haven inflows. But it hasn't been overwhelming. And uh, a slight weakness in the dollar here helped gold as well to the upside. Controversially, gold gained ground uh, this week and at the end of last week, despite uh, fairly bullish U.S. non-farms, uh, non-farm payrolls report on Friday. And uh, this suggests that, you know, there was some short covering involved. Uh, we don't see any significant evidence of uh, longs entering the market. If we look at the uh, commitment of traders report, uh, you know, the shorts obviously are and not excessively large, but they would be, you will see, when we have the next set of numbers, you will see some contraction in shorts. But longs were pretty steady, you know, there's not much really changing there. Now, another factor that's seeing gold prices rise is the further taper from the US, making the precious metal less attractive to investors. Does continued tapering mean a continued fall in the price of gold? Yes, I uh, still experience outflows, and this is to do with the fact that for the rest of the year, uh, general investors in the West expect very little, you know, from gold because we expect the dollar to be stronger despite uh, the current weakness. Uh, the Fed will be the first central bank to, uh, and already reducing the quantitative easing, but to be the first one also to completely pull out and maybe reconsider the forward interest rate guidance. And this is to do with the fact that the U.S. economy is actually doing quite well, and they are likely to do this before the ECB. So, uh, you know, the the, aside from Ukraine, there was little support in this market, and uh, should QE3 uh, by the uh, U.S. Central Bank continue at the current pace, you know, we see um, the program probably expiring, provided the economy continues uh, to grow, and uh, we see decent improvements in the labor market. Um, obviously, by year-end, the program will expire, probably in early or mid-autumn. And what this means is that, uh, really, investors would choose other assets of gold. For example, uh, platinum and palladium, interesting fundamentals there on the supply side, you know, the uh, very supportive um, mining strike in South Africa, for example, for platinum. Uh, also, you know, other assets, you know, the, the equities that pay dividends, the, uh, you know, gold is non-interest bearing assets. So really, unless you hold it to hedge uh, against inflation, but at the moment, inflation is very subject. And uh, also, I believe the Fed will be ahead of the curve and as soon as inflation picks up uh, from here or um, as the Fed monitors PCE index, once that picks up, you know, they, they, they will be very concerned about how to proceed with the ordinary guidance. And that's, that's the key message here for gold that, uh, you know, the, aside from any geopolitical concerns at the moment, really, there is not much. And finally, to what extent is falling demand in Asia affecting gold prices? The uh, Asian demand has been fairly weak lately, the consumer demand. This is due with the fact that uh, Chinese domestic currency has been quite uh, weak because the central bank is trying to uh, weaken it and the, uh, the People's Bank of China is um, in line with the government, you know, trying to um, stimulate, you know, the uh, experts and uh, revive the economy after the slowdown we saw at the start of the year, which is normal as well because China is uh, diversifying the, the, the new economic policy wants to constrain the total consumption. In India, obviously, the, we don't expect any changes to the uh, import regime until after the elections. And I think that's uh, why we're not seeing sort of substantial flaws just yet. And if we see a revival here, uh, it's likely to happen in, uh, obviously, the peak seasonal demand in uh, autumn ahead of Diwali and autumn festivals, you know, when traditionally consumer buying go by in India and hopefully after the elections some of the uh, import measures from last year relax and that then we'll see so, so some demand there. But aside from that, you know, the, 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 the investors were in the driving seat and they were the ones who uh, sold up excessively last year. They're the ones who uh, 
uh, drove the market higher in the early first quarter this year. Um, there was a strong rebound, and uh, they, for now, you know, there is really very little for gold here for sustained gains, unless again the uh, Ukrainian situation escalates, which. At the moment, it seems like the, there is a certain status quo in terms of the tensions are there. People are concerned about sanctions against Russia, but generally, generally, you know, uh, the, um, it, it has become um, peripheral in the sense that everybody was fearing the invasion of eastern Ukraine, but that obviously never happened, and now it, uh, the country is just really uh, struggling with, with all the tensions ahead of the elections. So. Andre, thank you very much for joining me again today. That's all we've got time for, I'm afraid. Thanks for watching and make sure you click back on Thursday as Natalie MacDonald will be bringing you another edition of Commodities Corner. Bye for now.